cold started to soak in. And I totally expected that when I closed my eyes, I too was going to die. And I'm going to tell you a story that when you first listened to it, you swear it would be a tragedy with a little mixed happiness, but it isn't. The whole story is nothing short of a modern miracle. I've always enjoyed hunting and fishing and uh, outdoor activities. I'm not afraid of adventures. At that particular time, I think everybody wanted to learn how to fly, and Brent just happened to be caught up in the same realm as everybody else in Estevan. May the 6th, 1979, when Brent Dyer, Donna Johnson, and Don Johnson drove out to the Estevan Municipal Airport and met with Norm Piskey to go to the town of Boise, Idaho. It had dual purposes. One was to give me my final cross country with an instructor before writing my actual written test for uh, getting my license and then, you know, I'd have my flying test. And the second reason was we were picking up a West Highland Terrier in Boise for Donna. Uh, the weather was stormy uh, here, and it gradually got worse as they went south. I was struggling the whole time, pulling back. I was unable to keep the aircraft from dipping and diving, so I relinquished the controls to Norm. The last thing I remember is heading to what seemed to be, you know, another <laughs> opening in the mountains. We piled into the, the end of the canyon. There's just vast amount of blood just pouring down. We're kind of in and out of, of consciousness. But I was awakened by the sound of Donna screaming, Dad's dead, Dad's dead. Yes, Don had been killed. But I also noticed that Donna was wearing her father's coat. That's all he had to give, his coat, but he also gave his life for, for his daughter. Myself, my jaw was broken, teeth knocked out, quite an extensive gash here. There was quite a few on my face from, from going through the windshield, broken shoulder, dislocated ankles. And I totally expected that when I closed my eyes, I too was going to die. I too was going to die. My flight instructor, Norm Pischke, when he flew forward in the impact, this knob right here had struck him in the side of the head and had opened up right down to the brain. So he was, was unable to talk. He started pointing down the canyon. Norm's gone now. He walked off someplace yesterday. He never came back. So I'm just hopeful that he's found something. Maybe he can bring help. Bring help. Bring help. Bring help. Well, we knew that there was a problem. Uh, the second day. So I flew down to uh, Bozeman, where the search was being conducted from. Every day we'd get up in the morning and we'd, Kate, today they're gonna find us, I just feel it, or, you know. That day went by and days upon days went by. After the first week, uh, the search started to wind down and they quit looking uh, for Brent. Our food supply has run out and we've had to make a major decision. We weren't going to die of our injuries, we would just plain starve to death. We prayed to God and asked him if it's right and somehow 
we feel it is. Either we're disturbed to death, or we're gonna have to eat on. Eat on. Uh, and a lot of people, they condemned Brent, Donna, for what uh, took place, but they've never been there. Survival is one of the instincts that man has. We knew it had to be done. We just felt that Don was saying, I gave my life for Donna. Don't make it a waste. I remember when it, we finally decided that, you know, we are not going to be found. It's been two weeks and they've got to have decided by now that they're looking for bodies. We got up Sunday morning and it was an absolutely beautiful day. If we needed a sign that the weather's got to be good to walk today, I mean, it was there in neon. So I was able to kind of half crawl, half drag myself up this last three, four hundred yards. And as I was panning the horizon, one little nick in the Roll Mountains and through there, I could see green. And I said, see it? See the green? And there was a little spot of green over there. And she just like, that's where we're going. We're never going to get out of here. We've been lying to ourselves all this time. Look, for as far as we can see, there's nothing but mountains. We were beat. We were cold. We were drenched. We got to the top of that hill and the plane down below us that we've been at for two weeks. and how many hundreds of miles of mountain out ahead of us, and we both broke down. It was like, yeah, we gave up. And we were both in tears. And what happened, I don't know. I stood up and I said, I don't care. I'm not giving up, and I don't care if it takes us till July. I'm getting back to see my wife and kids. And Donna, too, was just like a bolt of energy. We basically clawed and crawled and hooked her way along the mountains and, and it took us three days to walk along that peak of mountain to where we could finally get out to that green area. But, you know, my arm was broken and ankles dislocated and we had gloves for socks and this kind of thing. They estimated that we walked about 35 miles up and down and we finally got out of the bottom area and got up into what had appeared to be three days before a green spot. I looked down and there was this old worn out trail and there was garbage, canned goods that had been opened and left there and it's like, oh, look at garbage, you know, people have been here. Then finally walking around that last corner and looking through and seeing buildings. It had been 19 days and we were bent and bruised and bled on and set on fire and we're out. I'm alive. I'm okay. I guess the fact that they had eaten Don bothered him tremendously. And same with Donna. The other side of family doesn't really talk about it that much. They just want to forget about it. There's just no choice from the story that I read and from what I had heard and seeing the emotion and the feelings on Brent's face that there is definitely no question of what they had to do. And to this day and right from then, neither one of us has ever second-guessed that decision. I'm sure I'd probably do the same thing. It doesn't really bother me. It wouldn't be my first choice, if, but I'm sure I'd do it to survive. You know, it was a necessity. And uh, today we've got them with us, and so is Donna. So, And Donna certainly would never have made it without Brent. There's no question about that. I should have been killed in that airplane crash. I've often wondered what purpose I was spared for. Is there something that I should be doing with my life? Is there a message that maybe I should be trying to get across? Or is there a mission I should be on for the 
the gift of being given a second chance and I, to this day, I couldn't tell you if there is. He really taught me that you have to respect what you have in this lifetime because it's a very short lifetime. It can be taken at any time. And it's kind of given me, a, I guess, a, a serenity in life that I can just sit back and have a little talk with myself and, and remember back to that point in time that, you know, and I guess I, I will probably, when my time's finally finished, have lived really a peaceful life.